I've got two versions of our application running currently, one in development on localhost 3000 and one in production. So I've actually deployed our app with the code that we've written up until this point. We've added basically all of the functionality that we're going to include for our app, but notice that when one user is looking at a given pin, so they have a pin selected, and say another user is in the same area and they've got the same pin selected, you'd imagine that if for example, one of our users wrote a comment on this pin that the other user would be able to see it right after it was posted. So let's try adding a comment to this pin that both users have open. And once we see that it's sent off and we check the other user's blog area and we see that it doesn't show up. So we'd actually need to refresh the page in order to display that change. And that's not what we want. We want this app to display changes in real time. We want to broadcast data changes whenever a user creates a pin, deletes a pin, adds a comment, etc. So in order to add this functionality, we're going to need to add one additional piece to our GraphQL setup, and that is subscriptions. Subscriptions allow us to listen for data changes within our apps. So when a change is made coming from one user, the same change is visible to all users within the app. So we'll set up subscriptions very much like we set up queries and mutations. We'll head all the way back to type defs. And at the bottom, we'll create a new root type, type subscription. The convenient thing about subscriptions, at least for ours, is that they won't accept any arguments and they're going to return the same data that a given mutation returned. So basically we're going to create subscriptions that will correspond one to one to our mutations. So let's set up a subscription to listen for changes when a new pin is created with create pin. We're going to call the subscription pin added and for its return value, it'll be of type pin, same as for create pin. For delete pin, the subscription will be pin deleted, which will also return a pin. And for create comment, since create comment updates a given pin, we'll call this corresponding subscription pin updated. Now, once we've defined our subscriptions within type defs, We'll head to our resolvers and create within the object that we're exporting from this file a new object, a new property on this object called subscription, like we did for query and mutation. Now setting up subscriptions, at least within this app, is going to involve creating what's known as a publisher subscriber pattern. We're going to publish the changes that come from a mutation. And then our client, our React app, is going to subscribe or listen to those changes that have been emitted. And publishing changes to make it available to our client isn't as simple as just returning the data from a mutation or subscription. It involves using a special tool from Apollo Server called PubSub. So we'll bring that in from Apollo Server and we need to instantiate pub, pub sub, so we'll say new pub sub and put this in a variable with a lowercase p and we're going to begin creating our subscriptions with the pin added subscription so to publish the data changes that are coming from create pin we need access to the return value the value returned from the create pin resolver so we'll head down to the create pin resolver and before we return with the pin added object we can publish what's in pin added by saying pubsub dot publish and the first argument that we pass to publish is a string which represents the subscription and this string is going to need to be used in multiple places both within the mutation as well as in the corresponding subscription resolver so we're going to put this string value within a variable and the string value is going to be for the pin added subscription pin underscore added in all caps and we'll put it in a variable with the same name pin added 
So once we pass in pin added to publish, then we can pass in our data, pin added in camel case. However, we need to provide this within an object like so. And then we also need to create a corresponding resolver for pin added. So we'll create that on our subscription object. And for this resolver, we're just going to have a property called subscribe, which will be a function. Again, subscriptions don't take, or at least our subscriptions don't take arguments. So we can just write an arrow function with no parameters. And then for the value coming from the mutation to be actually published, we need to return pubsub.async iterator and provide the string that we pass to publish, which is stored in pin added. And that's it. So now the data being returned from create pin, when there's a pin created, will be published with our pin added subscription. And now we can set up our other two, pin deleted and pin updated. So we just need to follow this exact pattern of going to the mutation resolver, saying pubsub.publish, and for this one, we'll pass in the string pin deleted. So we'll create a pin deleted variable and store in it a string, the same name. And the data as the second argument will be within an object pin deleted. And then for create comment, this will be pin updated. And we'll create pin updated. And we'll pass to it the pin updated data. Then we'll head down to subscription again, add pin deleted. And we can just copy the subscribe function where we'll pass to async iterator pin deleted. Then for pin updated. pin updated. So now we can head to our client. Now the one thing to note is though GraphQL request is great for queries and mutations, it doesn't have support currently for subscriptions. So in order to subscribe to the data that's being published from our backend, we're going to need to add a GraphQL client that does allow for subscriptions, and that is Apollo. So we'll set up Apollo within index.js within source. And the first step will be importing a number of packages and tools. The first thing we'll import will be Apollo provider. It's going to provide Apollo to our components so we can execute our subscriptions or use subscriptions, I should say. And Apollo provider is going to come from React Apollo. Then we'll import Apollo client from Apollo dash client. Then we'll import web socket link. It's important to note that subscriptions are done over web sockets, not over an HTTP connection. So we'll get that from Apollo link WS. And then to set up Apollo client, we'll need to import a cache, which will be in memory cache from Apollo cache in memory. So we'll begin above our root component by setting up our WebSocket link. So we'll say new WebSocket link, where first of all, we need to provide a URI. So our Apollo client needs to connect to a WebSocket version of our API endpoint. And that's provided by Apollo server as WS forward slash forward slash localhost 4000 slash GraphQL. And we'll also pass in some options to say that if there's an error, if there's a problem with connecting to this WebSocket link, we're going to ask it to try to reconnect if it can by setting reconnect to true. 
and we'll get back from WebSocket link, new WebSocket link, a value that we're going to put in a variable called WS link. Then we'll create our Apollo client, just like we created a client for GraphQL request. That will take first a link, which comes from WS link, and a cache where we need to instantiate a new in memory cache. Then we're going to use React Context to make our Apollo client available to all of our components. So we'll add a set of Apollo provider tags, wrapping our context provider, and to it we need to pass our client on this client prop. And once this is all done, we'll save all three of these files. We'll make sure we're not getting any errors in our terminal. And it looks like I made an error in index. I didn't put our instantiated Apollo client within a client variable. My mistake. But once we save that, it looks like there are no errors. And we'll take a look in the next video at how to actually listen for data changes that are being published by our server.